Hello everyone. One day, a man known for his great wit and wisdom, dressed in long brown robes like a monk, was walking through a bazaar, and a large group of people were following behind him. As he walked, he stopped after every few steps, waved his right hand in the air, touched his feet, and then jumped up yelling as loud as he could. Hoo hoo hoo! And at each time he did so, the crowd would also do exactly the same thing. One of the merchants who had known the man well asked him, "My friend, how come all of a sudden you have started wearing brown robes, and besides, you have so many people following you and imitating everything you do?" I have become a spiritual master. All these people are modern day spiritual seekers and I am teaching them the path to enlightenment the man replied with a wry smile The merchant said Oh that's wonderful but tell me how are you to know for sure they have been enlightened Sarcastically the man replied That is the easy part Every morning I count them all of those missing or enlightened friends after his conversion to the christian faith the apostle paul traveled widely throughout the eastern part of the roman empire which included modern day syria turkey greece malta and italy to spread the teachings of jesus for about 7 years he eagerly preached the gospel to both jews and gentiles and established churches In addition to preaching, Paul is thought to have written letters or epistles to these churches to help them keep their new faith growing alive and true. Friends, he wrote his letter to the church of Philippi in Greece while he was in a prison, probably in Rome about 62 AD. As new converts, the believers in Philippi needed help. and even warnings about the danger of being misled by false teachers so after having exhorted them concerning the need for humility unity and sacrificial service for the advance of the gospel in the first two chapters of his letter paul enjoined them to imitate him this is what we read in today's text friends at first reading of the text Paul's exhortation to imitate him may sound strange to our ears. Some might raise questions like, was Paul trying to put himself on a pedestal or even above Christ? Or was he trying to establish a position for himself? Or did he want to be thought of by every believer as the ultimate example of a godly person? No, not at all. Of course, friends, Those who are familiar with Paul's writings would agree that St Paul was truly the greatest example of a Christian who ever lived. It was in because of what Paul was in and of himself that he called on other believers to imitate him, but rather he was more than any other sinner who ever walked the earth. Yet he willingly and diligently followed the example of Christ. Friends, Paul himself admitted in his letter to Timothy that he was the worst of sinners because of his life before his conversion. As a matter of fact, he had also exhorted the early Christians to follow the example of other godly elders in the church. So, Paul's purpose in calling the Philippi Christians to imitate him was to spur them to think carefully about how they lived for God. friends paul writes join with others in being imitators of me brothers and sisters and observe those who thus conduct themselves according to the model you have in us friends paul hoped the philippians would look at other christians and imitate them but only to so imitate them as far as they were imitating christ just as paul was doing thus He just acted as their elder brother or godly father in faith. Moreover, Paul not only admonished them to be united in their imitation of him, 
but also reminded them to keep their eyes alert on others who could fool them into thinking that they were worthy examples of Christian life. Apparently, it was something that Paul had warned them about before, not just once, but several times. Friends, Paul writes, For many, as I often told you and now tell you even in tears, conduct themselves as the enemies of the cross of Christ. Friends, Paul pointed out to them that in their church, which was as good as any, there were many false teachers and false believers who claimed to be followers of Christ, but who were in fact the enemies of the cross of Christ. Friends, here he was not just referring to his enemies or those who were enemies of the Christian faith or even of the Lord Jesus Christ himself, but to those who were enemies of the cross of Christ. Friends, what does the cross of Christ really mean? It is not the material cross that is made of wood, metal or fiberglass to which Paul alludes, but it is Christ's passion and death on the cross. By the cross, we Christians believe that Son of God, Jesus Christ, actually and literally died for us, and that we are made completely righteous in God's sight by faith in Christ's atonement for our sins on the cross. He calls those who belittle or ignore or depreciate the doctrine of the cross, that is, Christ's atoning sacrifice for our sins as the enemies of the cross of Christ. Thus, the enemies of the cross of Christ can be categorized as the people who may even speak favorably of the Lord, commending his exemplary life and benevolent influence, but teaching that Jesus Christ died not to atone for the sins of men or to bear our guilt and stand beneath the judgment of God as our substitute and sacrifice for sin, but simply that he might inspire us to live a similar life of sacrifice for others. Friends, in this connection, Paul further identifies four characteristics and consequences of these enemies of the cross of Christ. 1. They are destined for destruction. 2. They have made their stomach their God. 3. They glory in things they should be ashamed of. 4. Their minds are set on earthly things. In other words, Paul described the enemies of the cross of Christ in the ancient Philippi church as the people who seemed to be heading for eternal life, but in fact were heading for eternal destruction, who were preoccupied with the food laws and dietary restrictions required by the Jewish law, who were pursuing glory in things which should have been considered shameful, such as circumcision, demanded by the Jews but considered shameful by the non-Jews in the Greek or Roman world, and who are focusing on the life and practices relevant only to this world. Thus, there are many Philippi Christians who are not following the example of Christ or refusing to conform to the exemplar of Christ as modeled by Paul. Friends, it was against this backdrop that Paul reminded the believers of their prestigious citizenship in heaven. He writes, Our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we also await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will change our lowly body to conform with his glorified body by the power that enables him also to bring all things into subjection to himself. Friends, here Paul uses a political concept, citizenship. Remember, at the time of Paul, Philippi was a city in the region of Macedonia, but it was a Roman colony and that meant Roman citizenship for the inhabitants of Philippi, and they were proud of the fact. Paul also knew the power and privilege of being a Roman citizen, so he kept reminding them of a very important but often overlooked fact that they were citizens of heaven. Since they had trusted Christ and put their faith in him, they had to remember who they were. They were not citizens of this earth, but rather citizens of heaven. 
friends while they were citizens of philippi where they were growing up and living all their life they needed to remember that they were actually sojourners on earth therefore their home would never be on this earth but rather as citizens of heaven heaven is where they belong and where also the lord jesus christ lives moreover paul reminded them that they were to live with an eager anticipation of the day when they would meet the lord because when he comes he will transform their present lowly bodies that were subject to pain temptation imperfection and ultimately death to his glorious body which refers to jesus resurrected body in addition knowing that some believers might wonder how such a thing could be possible paul said that it will be done by the power that enables him also to bring all things into subjection to himself friends finally paul spoke of the deep feeling he had in his heart toward the philippi christians he told them that they were his joy and crown and that he loved them and longed for them to do well by standing firm in the lord in other words they were not to let themselves be knocked off the path that god had laid out for them they were to hold fast to their faith in the sacrifice that jesus made for them on the cross friends what is the message for us one when we truly imitated paul we actually imitated christ himself for he said that we ought to follow his way of following christ there is a pattern for christian living that paul wants us to discover and then imitate this pattern includes selfless sacrifice not seeking one's own interest but caring for others more than caring for ourselves and running hard after christ 2 we must think carefully about the examples we follow in life because there are many enemies of the cross of christ such as those who preach contrary to what is taught in the bible and those who are hostile to the atonement jesus made for us on the cross friends to follow these enemies of the cross is to follow the path to destruction and loss so we must pay careful attention to those of whom we imitate otherwise we might also become an enemy of the cross of christ friends imitation is good but we must be careful to imitate godly examples and to check out the doctrine of those who seek to lead us we should not imitate the one who merely claims to be but imitate a person who really is a christian we should imitate the way of those who like paul count all things to be loss for the excellency of the knowledge of christ jesus and reject ungodly examples 3 We must realize that for us Christians the earth is not our home we are sojourners here and our true home is in heaven we are citizens of heaven that's where we belong and that's where our lord jesus christ himself lives friends since we hold a heavenly citizenship we should look and behave differently from the citizens of this world so instead of setting our minds on earthly things we should set our minds on christ instead of being guided by our own sensual desires we should be led by self sacrificial service to others four when pressures rise against us let us hold fast to our faith to the very end remember when we are living well our own life becomes worthy of admiration and imitation as well amen god bless you